Nice choice. I just wanna rock. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. I had a chance to see the Blue Beetle movie, so this will be my review video. The very first new character in James Gunn's rebooted DC movies. I know there's lots of questions about that. He did publicly clarify how it's going to work, so I'll explain that during the video. Since we have a bunch of DC movies this year, and most of them will not be canon pretty soon, Blue Beetle is the one exception to that. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. I'm doing a giveaway for movie tickets, so all you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and just let me know where else you want to see Blue Beetle in the upcoming DC movies and series. We already know a couple places where he's supposed to show up in the future. I'll talk about that in my full breakdown Easter eggs videos, which I'll post later this week, like my post credit scene video. There is a post credit scene, so be sure to stay after the credits and please don't post spoilers on this video. As of me posting this video, it hasn't come out everywhere yet. Don't worry, I will post full breakdown Easter eggs, all that stuff later this week. We'll talk about all that stuff. There is plenty to talk about. My only real exposure to the Blue Beetle character on screen before this was the Young Justice in the Smallville series. I did read most of his original comics when the character debuted during Infinite Crisis back in the mid-2000s, so most of my memory of the character is from that era. Of all the TV show versions of the character, overall, I'd say Young Justice is the superior version of Blue Beetle, just amongst that and Smallville. If you haven't seen either versions, I would recommend checking them out. There was a brief period where they tried to develop a Blue Beetle TV series with a similar version of the character, but it was back with Smallville era level technology. Pretty easy to see why they decided not to do it, just because it would have been so expensive with that level of technology. This new Blue Beetle is a very easy upgrade for the live action versions of the character, like it is a huge step up from what you saw during Smallville. Originally, the movie was greenlit with the intention that it would be a small budget streaming movie that they would release on HBO Max, kind of like the Batgirl movie, so this will start to sound familiar. The movie has a very interesting history, like a lot of DC movies that are coming out this year. You have to remember that this was back in the ancient before times of just two years ago when AT&T still owned Warner Brothers. They and other streamers like Disney Plus were developing movies just meant for streaming, not for theaters. So they were spending way less money on it going into it. Blue Beetle had always been planned to be a smaller type of movie compared to something like The Flash, which reportedly they almost spent about half a billion dollars trying to make and reshoot and market. Blue Beetle cost like a fraction, like a tiny fraction of that. The movie survived a couple big regime changes at Warner Brothers in DC, like all the DC movies this year. Infamously, Warner Brothers separated from AT&T, then merged with Discovery. They started canceling stuff left and right to save money. That's what happened to the Batgirl movie. But on the flip side of that, this is a huge win for the Blue Beetle movie, early on especially. They felt like the Blue Beetle movie was so strong that it went in the complete opposite direction of something like Batgirl. Instead of canning the whole movie after it was shot, they upgraded it to a full theatrical release, gave it like a little bit more money and a little bit more marketing behind it. To boot, instead of relegating it to the no longer canon Snyderverse of DCEU movies, even though originally it was supposed to be canon to the DCEU, without having to make any huge changes or delete a bunch of it, James Gunn said that he was making Blue Beetle canon to his new DCU rebooted movies. Like, yes, you will see this character show up with other future characters that I'm introducing in upcoming movies. There are a couple minor points in the movie, like there are some Man of Steel references to Henry Cavill's Superman and Zack Snyder references that you'll recognize pretty easily, even though technically it is supposed to be canon to James Gunn's DCU. That'll throw a couple people off, but I didn't think it was too out of place during the movie. The director just claimed that he was a huge Zack Snyder fan. Then Zack Snyder very publicly supported the movie, said he was bringing his entire family, was really excited to see it. So it was actually a pretty cool situation. Very different story from what you saw when the Flash movie was coming out. So of all the DC movies this year, it just feels like Blue Beetle got the biggest upgrade of any DC project ever and is getting way more push behind it than something like The Flash, which they spent hundreds of millions of dollars trying to market. And after seeing the movie, I feel like they made the right call with Blue Beetle, even if you weren't a huge fan or aware of the character before Young Justice or Smallville, or you're just learning about him now, the movie succeeds on pretty much every front where the Flash movie failed. Really important to remember, though, that it's designed to be a much smaller type of movie. It just succeeds on every front that it attempted. They only spent about $120 million making it, which for superhero movies is like the money you find in your couch cushions. It didn't have any of the weird logic errors that the Flash movie did or any like really big missing character arcs that it feels like they just deleted out of the movie. And even when the movie gets a little too silly, it never strays into the territory of like the Ezra Miller Flash level weirdness, like the really strange CGI choices they made with the Speed Force 
Blue Beetle CGI, huge upgrade from Smallville, obviously, pretty easy for them to do that. Remember, the Smallville version was more than 10 years ago. It doesn't suffer from that weird Ezra Miller swim running effect kind of thing, like they're not doubling down on any weird stuff from previous movies. And the movie is canon to the upcoming DC movies like Superman Legacy, which I think was one of the biggest strikes in its favor because I think a lot of people who even weren't familiar with Ezra Miller or any of the drama around the Flash movie just weren't as excited about it because they knew that the Flash movie wasn't going to be a thing in another year or so. Like James Gunn and DC basically came out and said that there was no Flash stuff happening in the first era of his DC movies. Really easy way to get people to avoid your movie if you tell them that it's completely irrelevant in the next couple of months. Thankfully, Blue Beetle has none of those issues. There were a few minor things in the movie, a few minor issues that I had I'll talk about in a second. But for instance, if you're not a big Blue Beetle fan or you're not a big fan of the actors in the movie, this isn't going to completely turn you around. But Zolo was great as Jamie Reyes. Most of you will remember him from Cobra Kai. He's great on that series. I think he did a better job in the movie as Jaime Reyes. He definitely captures the energy of the comic book. You will be excited to see what he's going to be like crossing over with these upcoming characters like Booster Gold, Superman, the other Justice League characters when they're eventually introduced. The way I think of him is kind of like a Tom Holland, Spider-Man type of character during Civil War, like a younger version of the character, even though in this movie, Jaime Reyes' character is a little bit older. He's like post-college. He's got the same type of energy that Tom Holland, Spider-Man had when he was first introduced to the MCU. One of the other major wins of the movie that it has over The Flash is his relationships with his family are way more prominent, even though The Flash's mother was like the whole reason for Flashpoint during that movie. During Blue Beetle, his actual family are much bigger characters throughout the entire movie, not just like the beginning and the end of the movie. They're not just minor plot points. Each of his family members plays a huge role, very clearly definable role in the movie. His grandma, Nana, is probably one of the standouts for that. George Lopez is either like a love it or hate it kind of situation. If you like his type of comedy, his vibe before this, you'll enjoy his character. He gets pretty silly. But if you did not like him before this, the movie isn't going to turn you around on him or anything like that. He almost gets a little too silly at times. He's sort of like the crazy conspiracy type of character. But he does have a great relationship with Jaime Reyes in the film. So he was great during those parts of the movie. Bruno was great as Jenny Cord. She's playing Ted Cord's daughter in the film. Most of you who are Blue Beetle comic book fans, I'll talk more about him in my full breakdown and Easter eggs video later this week. She is one of the big comic book changes that the movie makes. But they did a good job of setting her character up for some really interesting story upgrades and potential sequels or future appearances. They're waiting to see how the movie does financially at the box office, like you would expect before they greenlight a sequel. So there's always a chance that they don't do more Blue Beetle solo movies. If that happens, they would probably just see the characters cross over in future movies from other characters in series like the Booster Gold series related movies to that stuff. Bruna and Zolo had great chemistry together, so I'm interested to see where they take the two of them together in the future. If you're a big Dragon Ball fan, the best comparison I could make is she's kind of like a Bulma in the movie, like the tech wizard that has access to all the cool toys. Most of you who watch Power Rangers at some point in the last 20 years will remember Becky G. She's playing the voice of Kaja Da, the Blue Beetle Scarab itself. She was a Power Ranger herself as well. There's a bit of Power Rangers energy in this. The director made some Cayman Writers references on his Instagram too. Most people saw the anime influences when the first trailer debuted. She's playing kind of like a Jarvis or a Friday type of role to make a Marvel comparison to Iron Man movies. I didn't think her character was quite as good as Jarvis, but there's a lot of room for them to improve that when they bring the character back. Susan Sarandon did an okay job as the main villain, Victoria Court. I was a little surprised to see her in the movie, but she's always pretty solid in most of her appearances. Harvey Guyon was fun as her scientist henchman. You probably remember him from What We Do in the Shadows. The other obvious villain in the movie was Carpax. He had a slightly better character arc than Victoria Kors, or at least more clearly defined. He was more of the tragic villain. They wanted his story to be like a dark parallel for Jaime Reyes. Like, this is what could happen to you if you didn't have such strong relationships with your family and them around you. Seriously, Vin Diesel would be proud of how important family is to this movie. It's all about family. The director did a good job of adapting the energy of the comic book with a few minor backstory changes. Like, he definitely understood the assignment. Meant to be a much smaller movie, but he want all the character arcs, especially the supporting characters, to shine through. They also did a good job of setting up for potential sequels, future crossovers with other DC characters. So there's a lot of interesting ideas that they bring up during the movie, but not things like the Flash movie, where it's like a big plot point that sets up absolutely nothing that they're ever intending on paying off. 
Most of my minor issues with the movie that just gets a little too silly at times. It definitely feels like it could have been a big budget TV show if they'd wanted, but a really good TV show compared to something like Secret Invasion, for instance, which cost Marvel over $200 million. I can't believe that Secret Invasion costs more than a lot of giant Marvel movies. Blue Beetle costs almost like half that and succeeds on all fronts where Secret Invasion failed. Just to compare it to like all the other comic book superhero movies that are coming out this summer, similar types of movies, I'd say it's not quite as good as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Those three are like the standout S-tier comic book movies of this year. Blue Beetle is still really solid, definitely better than The Flash. I haven't seen Aquaman 2 yet, so I can't really compare it to that. Still think that Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse and Guardians 3 will go down as the best comic book movies of the year, though. Right after that, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, then right after that, probably Blue Beetle. When you have a chance to see the movie, post your reactions in the comments. Remember, no spoilers. My post credit scene video, full breakdown Easter eggs, will post later this week, so don't wait to go see the movie. And remember, stay after the credits. Big reminder, there's a bunch of stuff coming up next week too. Ahsoka episodes start, I'll be doing full videos for that. Be sure to enable alerts from my channel so you don't miss anything. All the DC HBO series will start next year too, like the Batman HBO series. I'll start doing more videos for that when they start releasing more trailers, but click here for my brand new Doctor Strange 3 video and click here for all my new Deadpool 3 videos. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.